Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about a film that is 25 years old, and uh, I actually saw earlier this year, for its 25th anniversary, on the big screen. Um, and uh, it's a film I really love. And that film is, of course, Fargo. Um, now, I got this uh, Shout Factory uh, version uh, through eBay, as I mentioned last time. Uh, perfectly brand new, you know, wrapped and everything. Has this and uh, yeah, uh, rewatching this. Uh, just prior to making this video, it's still an excellent film. Uh, uh, great movie. Um, performances are incredible. Francis McDormand, William H. Macy, Steve Semi, um, Peter Stormare, uh, Prince, Prince, Prince Nell, bleh, I can't pronounce names, which is nice. Uh, everybody in this film is excellent from the small characters to the main characters um, obviously this is from the Coen brothers um, this is my second favorite comedy of all time just behind Dr. Strangelove um, the, uh, seeing this also on the big screen was uh, incredible Learned some interesting stuff like uh, I can go to North Dakota in, in a certain place. I forget right off the top of my head, which of course makes complete sense um, now that I'm recording. But you know, you can go to a town in North Dakota. Uh, I don't think it's exactly Fargo, North Dakota, but a town near Fargo where they have the actual wood chipper, which I will discuss later, but that's also a spoiler. Um, but you can visit that, and it's just, uh, that's just a fun uh, fact that it was sort of listed. They have a little, little trivia stuff prior sometimes to these, like, uh, old movies, like stuff that maybe you never knew, maybe you did, but regardless, something interesting, and, uh, that was really cool and fun to, uh, see, just the various trivia stuff prior to the film, and of course watching the movie. Uh, it's always all, uh, excellent. Um, this basically has every feature that the normal Blu-ray has. Though the Blu-ray, unfortunately, does not have uh, like a little trivia track throughout the whole movie that the DVD has. So if you have the DVD, uh, I think it's worth keeping, at least just for that. Um, but outside of that, if you don't really care about it. Um, it's just something like the movie plays like normal, but then occasionally there'll be stuff popping up here and there. I think that's a bit of a shame, but I don't know, maybe stuff like that uh, for a while just what, like wasn't interesting anymore to people. Like, people didn't really care about that, so like if it was something on a DVD, the Blu-ray doesn't have it uh, because of that. Um, but, uh, Again, this film, uh, one of my favorite comedies. Um, this is actually my favorite Coen Brothers film. And I know a lot of people will say, you know, No Country for Old Men. And that's a good film also. Um, but I don't think it's better than Fargo. I saw this when I was like 13 or so. I was a teenager sometime, early teens. I don't think 12. I think that would be a bit too early, but I think 13. Um, and that was, and it was just hilarious. <clears throat> and of course, the whole, the, the following you're about to see is true. You know, it's a true story based on a true story. And that's the Coen brothers making fun of various films that claim to be based on true, on a true story or true events. And a good amount of time back at a certain, uh, where that was a big thing 
all those films really there's there may be some true elements in there that was from like based on actual events or an actual story but the, to claim it's a true story is complete nonsense when only a little bits and pieces throughout certain movies were actually true here though there was like actually one piece that actually fits that and that is Spoiler, at the very end of the film, you know, uh, Steve Buscemi is, he, he gets killed by Peter Stoner, their partners, kidnap, uh, well, it makes, makes his wife in order to get a lot of money from his father-in-law for paying the ransom, and then he gives half to the, you know, the uh, uh, kidnappers, and then he keeps half. Everyone's happy. And this is how all this happened. And it was really just to help. Uh, he had certain personal matters. And certain things he. You know. Uh, needs to do. Uh, for himself. And you know. There's certain things like you know. He couldn't ask for his. Uh, Father-in-law. Nor his wife. Because they don't know he needs the money. If he didn't know, and if they didn't know what he needs the money for, he wouldn't get it. So, and he thought this was the best option uh, he had, and it's just a, uh, and it's from that all the a uh, series of events unfold, and yeah, it, it, the end of it all. His spoiler again: his wife is killed because. Uh, Peter Stormare was uh, annoyed, so he shot her and killed her because of she started shrieking. And the previous night, uh, he said he went to get the money. And, uh, you know, William H. Macy, uh, his character's father in law, uh, was there instead of him. And he's upset and angry. He wants him to drop the uh, briefcase of money. He wants to know where his daughter is. He's just, just, he's just fed up with everything. Just shoots him. And he's, as he goes to get the money, he, you know, his father uh, has a gun and shoots him in the face. Uh, but instead of continue, continuing to shoot him, which I understand, someone's shot, they might be in shock and so surprised they didn't see that coming. But, I don't know, there was a clear moment where, you know, a good number of seconds, he's shot, he's surprised, he stumbles backwards, and falls down, and then he gets up, and then he shoots him, and then somebody shoots and kills him, but you have a good a gap of time to, between when you shot him and he fell and everything, could have kept shooting him and killing him and everything. Granted, you wouldn't know where your daughter was, which... So the whole point of this whole exchange, give him money, daughter, you know, Macy's wife, uh, comes back and everybody is, you know, uh, happy. Well, obviously that doesn't happen. And again, at the end of it all, you know, Sammy gets killed. And the true part of that is, you know, he... Uh, at the end, he's been disposed of by he's hacked to, with an axe and then Stormare uh, cuts his body in pieces and then puts the body in a wood chipper. That actually happened in um, Hella Crafts, who was murdered by her husband and um, uh, he froze her body and then cut her up and then put her body in a wood chipper and she was the first person in American history or this was the first case in American history where somebody was convicted for murder without a body which stuff like that is incredibly hard to actually get a murder conviction you know regardless of the evidence circumstantial and forensic and everything that you could tie somebody to killing somebody but the body is who knows where or in this case was 
disposed of. Uh, the wood chipper. Uh, but, you know, that was quite a quite a uh, case at the time, and that was in the 80s. The film takes place in the 80s. And um, that's the only part of the whole film that is actually based on a true story. Um, of course, Francis McDermott is great uh, as Marge Gunderson, the sheriff. Uh, you know, uh, she, we don't see her until like 30-some minutes into the film. You know, and she's seen as the entire lead of a film. Though I would argue William H. Macy is like the co-lead. You know, he I, I would argue he also has enough, just enough screen time as she does. Maybe she has a little bit more, but uh, I think uh, when all the nominations came out, he should have been for up for Best Actor. Um, I think he certainly should have been up for Supporting Actor, in my opinion. Uh, don't know if he would have won or not, but I think uh, it would have been a bit better if Sammy's up for Supporting, Macy up for uh, Lead Actor, and, you know, it won Best uh, Actress for Frances McDormand, who I believe she deserved it. Uh, Coen Brothers won Best Original Screenplay, and they should have won Best Director and Picture. The uh, film uh, was, got nominated for, like, a seven Academy Awards, I believe, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Yes. And um, one... Uh, to Best uh, Actress for Frances McDormand and Best Original Screenplay for the Coen Brothers and the film should have won Best Director and Best Picture. Way better film than The English Patient. That was, uh, I guess at the time, it was a huge thing. You know, Harvey Weinstein executive produced film. And, and we all know about how uh, much of a swell guy he is, and we don't need to talk about his <clears throat> swellness at all, or how he sort of rigged things in such a way where the films he produced uh, would get uh, nominated and win awards. I mean, rigged, I mean, he pretty much changed the standard of how campaigning for movies uh, worked in, as a, if I memory serves, they're still using the same method that Harvey Weinstein changed and twisted things for the Academy when it came to voting and campaigning, that they still have those things uh, run the way he ran things, and, you know, people copied because it was effective. Such a swell guy like that, uh, and doing that with like award shows like the Academy Awards, as well as you know the other swell things he we all know he did. Yeah, real stand up guy. Uh, also, real stand up of the Academy for not changing things to make the campaigning and such for movies. A lot better, even more fair. You know, you know, really great on them for not changing things for the better uh, because of a swell guy like him. You know, really great. Uh, but yeah, this uh, people say this is the best film of 1996. Uh, when you compare it to the nominees. I'm sure you know, one could argue other films would have been just as worthy. Uh, trying to remember offhand. Train Spotting was amongst them. Um, though that wasn't up for Best Picture, but it was nominated for Screenplay, like Adapted Screenplay. And that's a film that people really love to this day. Um, but, you know, regardless of how many awards it won or not, um, it's a great movie. Excellent film. Uh, I love it. It's a fantastic movie. Um, um, it's hilarious. You know, uh, 
great black comedy. Uh, even though IMDb, oddly enough, does not uh, consider it a comedy. It is like a drama thriller. I mean, yeah, there's drama, and I can see where they get the thriller aspect. Uh, crime also, I believe, would also suit it, too, because of the nature. But I think comedy, above everything else, would fit uh, Fargo for sure. But, well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who makes all the decisions of uh, IMDb, but whatever. You know, that's something interesting I, I just uh, recalled uh, looking at the IMDb page not too long ago. Comedy is not what it's listed. But, yeah, I mean, I know I didn't talk a whole lot at length, but, you know, I love this movie. It's a hilarious film, great movie, uh, great performances, direction, and everything. And one thing about this is it's annoying that how the guilds and such uh, made it, that the Coen brothers couldn't be credited as both directors of the films they did, as well as producers. Like, they gave each... Both were credited as writers, but... One would be credited as the director, Joel, and the other would be credited as the producer, but they both did both jobs, but apparently guild rules uh, dictate a certain amount of movies or years of working together to establish being an actual collaborative team. I don't know, I think when one, they come out of the gate from the first film onward, making movies together... I don't know, that's a collaborative team, you know. I believe Joel is going to make a film on his own without his brother. I believe it's an adaptation of that at Macbeth. A new version of that with his wife, Frances McDormand, as Lady Macbeth. Uh, I believe, at least, memory serves. It's been a while since I looked at it, so it could be different, but... Until that happens, yeah, the Coen brothers have worked together forever at this point. They never made a film without each other as the co-director and such. But it's sort of weird how one is credited as the director, the other is the producer, but both get the writing credit, which, you know, they, they deserve, but... And again, if they both, if it did win Best Picture and Director, uh, both their names should be on the little statues, statuettes, what have you, whatever you call them, not just one. Just a little uh, thing I recall uh, reading about and how it was like until 2004 or so. They were able to finally, they had enough movies, or they worked long enough to finally both get credit uh, for all three of the things they do, writing, directing, and producing. Both uh, edit their films together, um, Roderick James, James. Uh, of course, you know. Editor is not at all listed here, you know, of course. But yeah, uh, they uh, have a pseudonym because they didn't want their names uh, to be uh, seen like up teen, like, seem like, like ten times or so. They didn't want their movie to, at the end of the credits or whatever, during the credits opening, you see their names constantly over and over. Uh, so, for something else they did, they just had a pseudonym. And, um, there you go. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that is, uh, Fargo. My thoughts on Fargo. I love Fargo. Hilarious film. Uh, uh, one of the very best, uh, films from the Coen brothers. My opinion, the best film they've made. My favorite film they've made. Um, but they made excellent films before Fargo and after Fargo. That's not to say this is the pinnacle of their careers. Like they, P 
peaked with this and then it was just downhill from there you know <clears throat> nothing like that at all um i've seen the show fargo the anthology show every season's but different um uh, excellent show a bit more dramatic but there is still that humor is still there so that's always good um yeah uh anyway i hope you're all having a great day hope you all have a great weekend and a great week and i'll see you all next time